So, hello and welcome to the session on the recall questions of the INIC November 2022. Basically, the anatomy part which I'll be dealing. My name is Dr. Ankit Khandelwal, your anatomy educator, MBBS and MS in NR. Let us see some points before we proceed forward. Okay. So, a few things. Uh, our academy is launching again about the ultra combat uh, part two. It's going to be bigger and better. Now, there are separate uh, questions for MBBS year one, year two, year three both are post uh, intern or post intern. We are going to be a one hour combat for having 50 questions. And you can see well of, uh, all of the prizes which are over here. And uh, it's going to be happen on, happening on the 27th of November in the afternoon at 12 p.m. So kindly enroll, you can use the code, you can use the code Dr. Ankit 10 or any other code which you wish like. This was our update, so please mark your calendars on 27th November in the afternoon at 12 p.m. Next, we also are launching a very interesting new course that is for the mainly for the NEET P2023 a serious batch. It's going to start on November 21st and duration is of four months. And uh, last year, rapid division batch had a strike rate of around 85%. So that's a pretty good number, I suppose. All the top educators will be of the academy will be covering eight elements. Now, what are those eight, eight elements? A lot of that, but you can understand from here. That there is going to be rapid revision theory plus MCQs, IBQs, image based, in for very, very important PYQs. That is the uh, very important for any preparation. And topic wise test, subject wise test, grant test, mentorship, doubt solving. So, uh, leaving no stone unturned, really, really even touching every part of the preparation. It depends on you that how, uh, how seriously and how effectively you take the full use of it. And I'm sure that if you enroll through the batch and go through it, it's going to immensely help in your performance. For four months, this is a new price package that has been decreased, and so you can subscribe now. You can use the code also, Dr. K10. So, very important course. I repeat again, it starts on November 21st. It's a four month course, and it is intended solely to focus, totally focus on the need to be 2020. So, all the best. Apart from this, there's also a prof 2 package that is second prof, which has been started now, and there's a whole three month uh, charges and all fees and all that is. Uh, been shown over here it is going to be recorded content playlist is also going to be there live batch is going to be started so there is also recorded content that is around 370 plus hours of coverage of all the four subjects uh, by various top educators and live batch also is going to start uh, already on November 15th the mornings are there also there by our faculties subscribe now you can use the code and phone number over here for any queries these are a few updates uh, which are recently coming on. I repeat again, I again tell you about this new course for NEET P2023 uh, that you should take care of and really think about it. Coming to the topic that is our INICT and autumn questions. There are a few autumn questions which uh, we got from our students and let us discuss them and see if uh, that can be any helpful in the coming fourth exams. So question over here, again, 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 what to say? Cerebellum, histology, very common. This time the question came around the uh, molecular layer of the cerebellum is formed by which of the following. We all know by now that there is a molecular layer and then deep to it you have a single layer of protein cells. Deep to it you have a granular. You have a granular. These are the three layers found in the cerebellar cortex. These are three layers found in the cerebellar cortex. Now cerebellum as a topic is very important. We should also be knowing the various pathways of cerebellum. And if you look at those pathways, we remember there are five or six type of cells which you normally see. And those cells or cell bodies are found in these cerebral cortex. Over here, they are asking about the molecular layer. I um, mean, some options could be interchangeable A and B and some changes could be there, but yeah, these are the recalls so you can understand. But yeah, the molecular layer of the cerebellum, the main uh, cells which are present over here are mainly the stellate and the basket cells. Mainly the stellate and the basket cells are basically what are seen in the, in this, uh, let me change the, Okay, yes, color over here. Yeah. So, stellate and basket are normally stellate and basket seen in the molecular. Purkinje has a purkinje, and granular will have granular cells as well as the Golgi cells, which are found over here. Uh, we will definitely look at the image. So, in these options, B and C would be a good choice. You look at the image over here, it's a histological image of the cerebral cortex. This is the molecular layer over here, and you can see some of the basket cells being shown. These are the la very large, large purkinje cell bodies over here, having the purkinje cell layer. Apart from basket, you can also have the stellate cells. This is the granular cell layer which you are seeing, and it is having the Golgi and the granular cells mainly, and some glomeruli. Deep to the cortex, we have the white matter. But remember, molecular, Purkinje, and the granular molecular have stellate and basket cells. So that was our question number one. I hope most of you did it correct because it was, you can say, a repeated question because the topic is 
very very frequently asked in the recent not recent we can say but in the last five seven years it has been asked a multiple number of times apart from this we have one more question the again i don't think but very very difficult but yeah, again a repeated question sometimes we see these questions having balismus is caused due to lesion in which part of the brain these questions have been asked from quite a number of years when even when we were preparing we used to learn of these questions so semi balismus is due to lesion of a basal part of the basal ganglia or the basal nuclei and that is part is known as subthalamic nucleus subthalamic nucleus leads to a problem is there is an issue over here the patient shows signs of hemibalismus remember this it is a repeated question single liner we can say and uh, oftenly asked vitamin glows pallidus substantia nigra this is for the uh, we can say the parkinsonism and all other features then uh, the chorea and all are seen over here in the corpus tritum but yeah hemibalismus is for the so thalamic nucleus so this also should have been answered by any above average student who is revising the pyqs this tells us the importance of pyqs and the question another we can say another repeated and not very difficult it's an average question if to be honest over here they are asking that most common nerve injured at the proximal end of fibula what is the nerve injured that of proximal end of fibula what uh, this question is asking us and uh, here the figure is also shown but you can understand that the most common nerve injured in the lower limb per se is the nerve which is winding around the neck of fibula that is in the proximal end of fibula and that we all know the name of common peroneal nerve as being shown over here common peroneal nerve common peroneal nerve being a branch from the sciatic nerve so in these options obviously the option a would fulfill and that is the answer it winds around the neck of fibula and then it divides into uh, two branches one over here is the superficial peroneal nerve which supplies the lateral compartment of the leg and the other one goes a little bit deeper anteriorly and that is our deep peroneus deep peroneal so this is the deep peroneal nerve which supplies the anterior compartment of the leg and that helps in dorsiflexion the lateral compartment will help in eversion of it right? so this nerve being so close to the surface and uh, just between the skin and the bone and being on the outside lateral part is more prone for injury due to n number of accidents that can lead to this nerve injury right so again uh, simple question i suppose and feeling good to see this sort of questions so next what we got over here yeah femoral catheterization uh, local anesthesia has been given just below the inguinal ligament so we can understand the inguinal ligament if from the asis till pubic tubercle if imagine this point is the pubic tubercle this will be the inguinal ligament and that is also known as popper's ligament just for your knowledge it is from the external oblique epineurosis so now they are asking the femoral catheter L is given just below the inguinal ligament for placing the femoral catheter for which of the following nerve. So you can understand the language slightly here and there, but we all know that in the below the inguinal ligament there are few structures. For example, most laterally there will be nerve. Nerve does not come as a single bundle. If you look at a dissection, the nerve gives off a lot of branches as it enters. That nerve is the femoral nerve. Clear? Just middle to femoral nerve at the mid inguinal point, somewhat over here, you have the artery that is coming down. That is the femoral artery. And it was the external iliac artery superiorly. More medial to it, more medial to it. What we have, we have a vein over here. That is the femoral vein. And as it goes above, it becomes a iliac vein. More medial to it, uh, I guess we all are aware of it. That is the area, empty space, femoral canal having a deep inguinal limb node. So while doing femoral catheterization, catheterization, obviously the nerve block, uh, if at all given, it should the answer should be femoral nerve. And if that is an option, yes, that would suffice. Answer is yes. Other options if we go by like lateral cutaneous number of thighs, that is more lateral close to the ASI. So we can rule it out now. Option B is also interesting, genitofemoral nerve. What happens is that the genitofemoral nerve, root value having L1, L2, divides into a genital branch and a femoral branch. That's what happens to the genitofemoral. The genital branch over there, it enters into genital branch, enters into the spermatic cord, supplying the domestic muscle. Femoral branch of the genital femoral enters along with the femoral artery, but and it is sensory to what? It is sensory to there is some area of the femoral triangle, the cutaneous area of the femoral triangle. There it provides some sensation. So it is going along with this, a very, very thin nerve. But still, we would think of the femoral nerve because it is having a lot of branches like the anterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and the medial cutaneous nerve of thigh, the intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh, all of them are coming from femoral nerve. And being bulky and just alongside the artery uh, probably will go better with the option c although b is also not that bad option but we don't see genitofemoral nerve per se 
but we must see a branch of it that is a femoral branch of genital femora. Last and not last only is the optic being the option. Optic nerve is having the root value L2 C4 coming from the lumbar plexus, but 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 it goes medially and it supplies the medial part of thigh. But where does it enter? It does not enter right over here in the femoral triangle. Why? Because it is entering through the obturator canal, which is lying over here, where when the obturator foramen is totally covered by a membrane, and in the obturator foramen there is a small gap that is left, that is the canal. Now, this obturator nerve is coming through that canal and it goes into the medial side. Right? So this is not in this location. So considering all of these factors, uh, we'll go with option C as being the best option over here. Option C femoral nerve. More questions they ask, a very good question. Why? Because again, it is not a very difficult, but uh, I'm sure few percentage of students they look out from this topic, they leave this topic. Just is my personal experience that branches of posterior division of the internal iliac artery. Internal iliac artery. I used to teach it in detail in our classes. I hope that some of you who may have attended know about it. So internal iliac artery is the artery which is coming from the common iliac artery and it supplies the area of our pelvis and perineum pelvis, perineum and in fact it gives some branches which go to the lower limb including that to the gluteal region. So gluteal region being a part of lower limb. What branches go to lower limb? Actually we have obturator artery as well as the gluteal artery both the superior and the inferior. In a nutshell that is the uh, whole soul uh, idea of the internal iliac artery. But they are asking us what are the branches of posterior division. Now this I have told a number of times but I have to repeat it again that the posterior division of the internal iliac artery will give branches which are supplying the areas which are lying posteriorly in our body. What is posterior in the body is the vertebral column. So their branches of it we can remember by ILS. I refers to iliolumbar artery that is option number A, iliolumbar artery. L refers to lateral sacral artery option number B and S over here is superior gluteal artery. So basically A, B and C are the correct options. Now how they print the question in the exam that some of you having better memories might be knowing it better, but if you're asking the posterior division, or they may have asked which of the following are the branches of posterior division, except then D becomes the answer. Idea over here is we should know the branches of, of internal iliac artery, and a small slide over here might help you with this. So this is the posterior trunk, and that is the other one is the anterior trunk. And just a second, yeah, that's the posterior trunk. This is the anterior trunk. You can see the posterior trunk I L N S. Anterior trunk, if you see, then it gave branches to the lower limb, which I already told you as a form of obturator and gluteal. The rest, most of the branches goes to pelvic and perineum. Perineum is the intercodinal artery, which is an important artery. Right, so this way, which we divide the areas, we can have a good idea of what will be the branches. So therefore, the answer over here, no matter what it is, but the question came from the intermediate artery. And I suppose at least, if you know the branches, then you know the answer. All the best. One more question they asked then uh, that due to the rupture of the bulbar urethra, bulbar urethra, urine enters all these spaces except somewhat like this would have been the question. Now bulbar urethral rupture has become so common in the last many many years, I want to say recently but yeah, last many many years that the urethral anatomy should be very clear, particularly the male urethra obviously. And if we start then we have the urinary bladder, then we have the prostatic urethra in males surrounded by a prostate and a small membranous urethra bounded below by the perineal membrane. So this becomes a perineal membrane. And here you have the bulb of the penis. So it has a bulbar urethra. And then you have the corpora spongiosum, spongy and the penile urethra goes on to like this. This whole part, if I may slightly show it separately, P for prostatic urethra, M for membranous, B for bulbar urethra, spongy or P for penile urethra. That is the whole picture. Now this landmark is the perineal membrane. Below this, this space is the superficial perineal pouch. Should be crystal clear. And above this, including area of the urogenital diaphragm, this is the deep peroneal pouch. This should be crystal clear. Now they are asking that if there is rupture of the bulbar urethra, which is very common. And mind you, that this bulbar urethra over here is surrounded by the muscles, which are the bulbospongiosus, or the sides of the ischio cavernosus, which form the corpora cavernosa. So when there is rupture to the bulbar urethra, urine enters to all these spaces. So obviously if there is rupture to the bulbar urethra, urine will start to enter in these spaces and obviously our choice goes to superficial perineal pouch. Obviously it will go over here. And it's not being a part of it, the urine may go to the here also. In fact, 
in fact it will also go to the scrotum it may also go to the anterior abdominal wall beneath the scarpas so it also will go to the fibroid point e anterior abdominal wall deep to scarpas deep to scarpas fasci it will go there also now these two options if both i don't know I mean, if both are there then it becomes a little tricky but yeah both could be the answer obviously if the bulba urethra is ruptured urine won't go superiorly into the deep pouch due to the barrier by the peritoneal membrane that is fine but even then urine will find it hard to enter into the thigh because of the fusion of if you have heard of the holden's line this fusion of the scarpas with the facial lata when the scarpas fascia fuse the facial lata uh, around the level of the inguinal ligament horizontally again the urine does not normally enter into the thigh region it depends on your uh, basic uh, idea that what was asked in the options yeah both a and c will find the the urine, urine will find hard to enter at these spaces including one more space if i may add to your knowledge over here the posteriorly into the issue inner fossa or issue rectal fossa same thing urine will find hard to enter here also these three areas urine actually finds hard to enter and it's up to your best judgment that what was asked in the exam but yeah urethral ruptures their uh, management diagnosis investigations basic anatomy are all important that is the point over here that they are all important okay moving on we have a question about the adductor pollicis adductor pollicis pollicis means the thumb adductor means adduction of the thumb so there is a muscle which causes adduction of the thumb obviously it is one of the thinar muscle one of the four thinar muscles now they are asking us that thinar muscle and adductor pollicis is supplied of which of the following nerve needless to say it is again a very 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 repeated question so we always know and we study and we revise that thinar muscles are basically on the thumb side so they are supplied mainly by the medial nerve but we always an exception in a medicine and therefore here also is no exception being an exception so here all the muscles supplied except the adductor pollicis and this uh, muscle over here is supplied by the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve deep branch of ulnar nerve is what supplies this particular muscle adductor pollicis i am sure it should be one of the options the answer would be the ulnar nerve okay now let, let me show you a cadaveric image help you better understand this over here is the muscles of the right palm here are the thinar muscles remember adductor pollicis adductor pollicis is having two heads it has a transverse and an oblique head transverse and oblique is a transverse and oblique head and they are coming from the second or third metacarpal they insert into the uh, you can say the first metacarpal and the proximal phalanx of the first side only and these are the adductor pollicis and the ulnar nerve will come from here and it ends by supplying this muscle so picture this area is uh, for the opponent's pollicis and mind you that these both adductor pollicis and the opponents are covered by the flexor and the adductor pollicis here we have the hypothenar muscles this would be probably the uh, muscles so basically your lumbricals and interosseae over here so yes adductor pollicis is definitely supplied by the ulna without a doubt that is clear cut uh, answer over here yeah so these are some of the questions i uh, uh, if there are any other then please write them in the comment box so we can uh, create one more small session about the, those discussion i wish uh, looking at the questions i wish i uh, only understand that if we revise p by qs if we go more into the repeated question their topics things would be more simpler that is what i take it from that's all from my side dr ankit kandelwal thank you for your time